One thing I'd like to talk about briefly here is good file management. It's really important and very helpful when you can easily find your work. So much time is wasted sometimes when you can't find something and you're casting about for it, it can be very frustrating. And as you move forward into your careers and you start working with clients and art directors and other associates, really knowing where to find your work quickly is so helpful and so important. So I'm sure that many of you have developed or are developing good file management tips and um, strategies for yourself, but for those that are still struggling about how to organize their work, this these tips will hopefully help you. These are things that I do, and certainly you will find your own ways to work, but I thought I would share some of my tips with you as to how I keep my work straight, because I've developed some good systems, and they really uh, help me out a lot. One of them is to create folders for assignments and projects, and to keep everything for a particular project in one folder folder and naming that folder with a clear name that helps me understand uh, what it is and storing it in a place where I can easily find it. I have an example here. I am on a Macintosh, so if you have a PC it might look a little bit different, but the basic concepts are the same. Now, as you know, I'm doing these videos for Stevens Henniger College, so I have a folder on my desktop that says SH Videos. In that folder I have uh, some files that are related to the project, but they're not quite as important, so I keep them down at the bottom here, and I'm looking at these in an icon view. This helps me to sort of lay things out in, and organize them, but I know that many of you like to look at things in a list view, which is really helpful as well. But for this project, I decided to go with an icon view and lay my things out this way. Another thing that the Mac allows me to do is to color code folders and project names. Um, this is an older Mac OS X which is allowing me to highlight the whole name. A newer version of Mac OS X just has a little dot next to it which I don't like as well but that's life. I guess I have to live with it. <laughs> so I've colored these um, purple right now and certainly the colors can be changed to whatever you want going forward or have none at all you know but I like the colors. Inside this folder I have more folders and I have labeled them weeks 1, 2, 3, and 4 because there's four weeks in the course and it makes sense. So in my week 1 videos folder I have a lot of files. These are all the videos for week 1. Now I have laid them out in this icon view because these files all related to one video so I kind of kept them together in a group. These are another video. It just keeps me organized to know what I have and what I need to do. And if you look at these in a list view you'll see that there are some that are red and some that are green. All of the finished video files I colored green so I know that those are done and ready to upload. The red ones are the raw footage files that I know that I have available and then I went on to the green. So that was my particular naming convention and I also labeled them with um, the name of the, the video and what the topic was. So naming and color coding and um, folders have really helped me out here. Now one thing that you might um, do is if you have the same project and you're doing revisions on it and you're saving different versions, you can also add numbers or letters at the end of a file name to let you know which version is which. Also, if you go to a list view on a Mac, you will see the date that a file has been modified and the latest date and time, of course, is your most recent version. So you have a couple different ways to keep track of which version is which and develop a, a system that works for you. Don't just name the file with the same name over and over again because, well, first of all, the computer won't let you do that, but it would, you know, it's just easier to have different names. And then, the, lastly, the most important thing is a backup storage plan. Knowing to backup your files and uh, doing it on a regular basis, not just when the project is done, it's really going to help you out in case you lose a file or have a power outage or something happens. What I like to do when I'm working on a big project, such as these video files, is to save them and back them up several times during the creation. At the end of each day that I 
work on these videos, for instance, I back them up to my external hard drive. And then if I lose, if I lose something on my hard drive here, I can go get them there. Also remember that a backup storage is not in the same location as your computer. Just making a copy of something and saving it on the, on the um, same place won't help you if you lose your computer. So it has to be a separate area. So here are several options I'm sure you know about many if not all of these. The most convenient for temporary storage, the most portable, the easiest, and the cheapest of course is a flash drive, sometimes called a jump drive or a thumb drive. Uh, I use them all the time. They're really great again for temporary, short-term, inexpensive, and really portable storage. Um, here's a tip by the way, uh, don't just unplug it when you take it out of your computer. Make sure you actually eject it. Drag it down to your trash can icon or uh, choose file file eject because sometimes data loss can occur. An external hard drive is a very good investment. I have several of them and I use them a lot and they hold you can buy really high-end ones that store a lot and they're well worth the investment. Um, if you have a Macintosh there's something called Time Machine on some of the newer systems and you can configure your Mac to automatically back up to an external hard drive. I'm not sure what PCs have but I'm sure that there is something similar on a PC that you can use if you want to do that. You can also burn files to CDs. I think this is becoming less common now, but I do have several dozens of CDs that I've used to uh, back up my uh, completed projects. Actually, it's considered an archive because I don't save, I don't really back them up. I just archive them onto CDs. But you can certainly burn your files onto CD for that that purpose, and they um, can remain a viable source for a long time. Of course, the trend these days, and I think this is where people are going to be going, is cloud storage. And here is a website I'm going to show you, the top 10 best online backup.com. Uh, companies that that is that are recommended for cloud storage here. So I'm going to show you. There's the website there, and this site lists the top 10 for their recommendations. Um, you'll, notice that, you'll notice that JustCloud.com is trending up. It's becoming more popular and MyPCBackup.com as well. Some of these are trending down. They're not used as much anymore and the ones with the blue um, rectangle are holding their own. I would probably consider JustCloud.com because it's becoming more popular. It's got a great uh, user rating and it's free for a limited time. Just wanted to comment quickly about the Dropbox here. This is a company uh, and it's not related to the Dropbox in your courses. Uh, this happens to be their brand name, but it is not related to the Dropbox that you put your work in in the course. So don't feel that um, that since this is downward trending that you're going to lose your work if you use the Dropbox in your classroom because it's not related. So, so I hope that this has been a helpful overview for you with uh, tips for file management and ways to help you keep your work organized. Good luck and have fun. Thanks. Mm -hmm.